channel. Today, we're going to be printing and reviewing five different files from Maker World, Printables, and Thingiverse to find out which of these is the best 3D printed C clamp. So let's dive into it and get printing. All the files for the different clamps will be linked down in the description. When available, we'll be following the designer's recommendation for optimal settings. In order to keep the comparisons as close as possible, we will be printing all the clamps out of PETG. Since these files are from Maker World, there's no issue importing them. I am going to be switching from the engineering plate to the texture plate. Next, I'm going to review any changes he's made, which are highlighted in orange. Although the components could fit on one plate, I'm going to follow their suggestion for three separate print plates. Keep in mind, if you choose the accent color, you'll experience frequent filament changes, so you'll have to decide for yourself if it's worth it. All right, let's get this one printed. I'm very impressed with how clean this clamp looks straight out of the printer. A quick side note, if you're going to be printing this design, the wheel can only be inserted from one side. You will need a little adhesive to attach the pad to the top of the screw. We ended up using CA glue, but 3D glue probably would have worked better. In order to compare the different clamps, we bought this hand strength tester off Amazon. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but at least it gives us some measure of comparison. This design came out to an impressive 36 pounds and with fairly minimal deflection of the clamp body. Our second clamp comes to us courtesy of MKC AMC, who's recommending four walls and 20% infill. Looks like the clamp in the images was printed out of PLA, but it does say you can print it out of other materials with no supports required. So for the sake of uniformity, we're going to print all the clamps out of a generic PETG and on a texture plate. For the rest of the settings, we'll stick to what the designer suggested. Straight out of the printer, looks like the pieces are going to require a little cleanup. It seems the threads didn't come out as nicely as the first design we looked at. My guess, it's due to the orientation it was printed in, or we need to adjust a few settings on our printer. Adding some lubricant to the threads makes the assembly a lot easier. Although the pad doesn't swivel on this design, it attaches very securely and has a nice finish. This clamp maxed out at around 31.6 pounds, and with that much deflection in the clamp body, it makes me think that there just isn't enough infill. Our third clamp comes just from B-Factory who's suggesting two walls and 15% infill. Looks like there's an available Fusion 360 download, so you can modify the size of the clamp. I had quite a few issues with the files on this one. Some loaded on my slicer as one continuous piece, which you can see here. The 3MF version definitely seemed to work best. Let's try getting this one printed and see how it turns out. The clamp body itself came out looking clean. The two main problems I ran into was the screw was too big and wouldn't work. I ended up reprinting it at 98% scale and that seemed to do the trick. The other issue I had is that the swivel pad wouldn't seem to connect to the ball joint on the top of the screw. So in order to make this work, I had to reprint it at a smaller scale as well. This design had the least amount of clamping force so far at around nine pounds. Our next design comes from Wilco over on Printables. It's a design that can use both regular or smart infill. We ended up printing both versions to test against each other to see if there was a difference. Wilco had a lot of detail about the creation of this clamp on his page. Multiple versions, different files to choose from. We're gonna use STL version four for our testing. 
Under the strength profile, we'll increase the sparse infill density to 30% as suggested by the designer. The only other modification we'll make is to turn off the brim. Overall, the Wilco looks really good. The bottom side of the channel is a little coarse, but I believe that's just because of the orientation it was printed in. The threads needed some minor cleanup. Besides that, putting together this clamp was a breeze. Everything fit together really nicely. The Wilco also had the best swivel pad of the clamps we've tested. The Wilco with the traditional infill maxed out at an impressive 47 pounds. The one printed in white has a smart infill. Let's see if there's a difference. Looks like 48.8 pounds, so about a pound and a half difference. I'm surprised there's not a bigger gap between the smart infill and the regular infill. Our final design comes to us from Jorg over on Thingiverse. Jorg does state that this clamp is a work in progress and that file, instructions, and other stuff might change. But it was originally posted back in 2017, so I doubt anything will be updated at this point. We'll continue to use the same plate and filament that we've used for the other prints. We kept the default resolution setting of 0.012 in hopes that this would create a better quality thread. Other than that, we're sticking with the designer's recommendation of six walls and a sparse infill density of 50%. Like the B-Factory design, we weren't able to assemble the clamp. We reprinted the screw at 98% scale, and then it worked well. This design had the most ergonomic handle, and it ended up creating the most clamping force out of any we tested at an impressive 49.6 pounds. Of all the examples we looked at, those that performed the worst appeared to be copies of traditional wooden C-clamps and those that designed their clamps from the ground up to be 3D printed were the ones that excelled. Here's our lineup of the different clamps by strength, and here's our order from least favorite to favorite being the Curie and the Wilco. I also wanted to include a graph of how much filament is used by each print and total print times without any time lapses. If you have any suggestions for what we should test next, let us know down in the comments. And if you want to know the best files to 3D print in the future, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching.